Hussein Ostrovsky. He is an international human rights lawyer specializing in the Arab-Israeli conflict. He joins us now from Tel Aviv. Thanks so much, Arsene, for coming in on the show. Now, many have seen this election as a referendum on Netanyahu, and it seems like he managed to keep his voters. But can he form a government this time? Uh, look, uh, I think uh, only time will tell. Uh, based on the initial uh, results coming in from the exit polls, uh, there's no other way to, to call this other than a uh, devastating and very resounding victory to Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, by all accounts, he should not be where he is, but he has uh, so far, on our initial indications, um, uh, will receive at least a three to four seat um, lead over, over the challenger Benny Gantz. Uh, the issue, however, is which one of them can form a bloc. And it's near impossible for Benjamin Gantz. Uh, but uh, for Prime Minister Netanyahu, the path is far easier. The question is, can he get the magical 61 figures, uh, 61 seats, to allow him to form the government? At this stage, he's hovering around 5960, which will require some uh, wheeling and dealing and some uh, pressure in order to try and hobble together a coalition of 61, which is more or less where Israel was uh, you know, after the very first election in, uh, in April uh, last year. Uh, but he is in a far stronger position here, uh, given the lead he has developed over, over Benjamin Gantz and uh, his path to a coalition. This time is, is a little bit uh, easier, but only time will tell. And we saw how difficult it's been the last, uh, on the last occasions. No one expected to have two elections, let alone three. So I think there'll be uh, quite a lot of pressure exerted to, in order to do everything to avoid there being a fourth election. Uh, right, Arsen. Um why are so many Israelis drawn to Benjamin Netanyahu for so many years? I mean, he's facing corruption charges, bribery charges. All this comes in. He has a trial coming up in two weeks. How come he still managed to keep his voters? Um, look, it's, you know, in interestingly, just, you know, given that we're on Turkish TV, the, you know, Benny Gantz had actually claimed at one point during the election campaign uh, a few weeks ago that uh, if Netanyahu were to win, he would turn into Israel's Erdogan. Um, but look, at, at the end of the day, uh, what won um, Netanyahu is good old-fashioned grassroots campaigning. He got out there and he got the Likud voters to come out and vote. Uh, that is something that he was not able to do on the previous occasion. Um, you know, he's 10 years older than, uh, uh, than Benny Gantz, uh, but he fought this with passion and determination as if his life and career uh, depended on it, and in some ways it, it very much did. Um, look, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, Israel has relative calm, and uh, people here uh, appreciate that and they value that uh, probably above most other, most other matters. Um, right. You know, it's notwithstanding, not, not to undermine the, some of the real security threats, uh, but at the end of the day, Israel has relative peace um, and the economy is doing very, very strong. Um, right, so right. those, um, you know, people do credit the Prime Minister with that. But at the end of the day, it was a good old fashioned, you know, campaigning and getting people to come out and vote for his party. And uh, what does this mean for the Palestinians? I mean, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, again uh, wins the election. What can we expect now? I mean, many of them will be quite unhappy with this. Uh, look, I think uh, time will tell. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about Palestinians being unhappy with Israeli re, re, with Israeli elections. We have to remember that the Mahmoud Abbas himself is in his 16th year of a four-year term. Um, look, uh, that said, you know, both uh, Netanyahu and Gantz overwhelmingly endorsed uh, President Trump's uh, peace plan. Um, I think uh, whoever was going to win the election, we would see the peace plan more or less uh, put into force as uh, as intended. Um, I think that process will just likely speed up with the Prime Minister Netanyahu, and we will start to see that in terms of uh, possible annexation in uh, territories and communities in Judea and Samaria and in the Jordan Valley. Uh, but that will take time, and that will be done in consultation with a with the U.S. administration. Um, at the end of the day, you know, both Netanyahu and Gantz, um, you know, they both said they're committed to peace. Uh, they endorse uh, President Trump's um, peace plan. But at the end of the day, uh, with respect to the Palestinians, uh, peace will come when the Palestinians uh, decide to come to the table. And um, Arsene, just quickly, um, his trial is in two weeks, uh, Net Benjamin Netanyahu's a trial on corruption. Uh, what, what, what do you see coming out that? What can we expect? Um, what we'll expect, uh, we'll expect a very long and drawn-out process. Um, you know, the fact that uh, you know he, the 
trial was impending, uh, that didn't really make a difference in these elections. Um, everyone knew that was coming. Uh, this didn't come as a shock uh, to anyone. Um, but look, the the whole trial will come. Uh, you know, it'll take it'll take time, um, and then whoever you know. Depending on the result, uh, it will most certainly be appealed by whomever um, whomever um, uh, loses uh, the, the case. But it's something that will take a process. Um, you know, it's not something that's obviously ideal in any circumstances in any democracy, let alone when Israel is facing a number of uh, quite real uh, threats and challenges um, on our borders. Uh, but that said, you know, the prime minister, like everyone, is still entitled to a presumption of innocence, and he has vehemently, um, you know, claimed that he is innocent, and this is a political. Um, uh, political process, um, so he is. Uh, he will fight it, um, and he will continue to serve as prime minister. Um, I don't see that process changing, uh, but it will be a long and drawn-out process. That is one thing that is certain. Okay, Arsen Ostrovsky, we do appreciate your analysis for us here at TRT World. He's an international human rights lawyer, specializing in the Arab-Israeli conflict. Thanks so much for that.